Hey guys, this is Rack again. I wanted to do the last bit of this recording really quick before I head off to bed. Um, it's a little late, but uh, I thought I'd just go ahead and finish the commentary for the Iron Tube instance, part one you saw earlier, and uh, this is getting into the second half of what um, is the first Rift instance. Um, last time we fought two bosses. I went and looked up uh, what the first thing was and it was really easy and I thought it wasn't a boss but it was actually a boss um, and all he did was a little minor dot thing and that was pretty much it so you can kinda just treat him like trash now what we're gonna start encountering here in the second part of the dungeon is a couple weird mechanics um, first of all you'll see these little piles on the ground like this one right here that we're starting to attack called um, death shards Death shards, once you start to attack them, start to spawn all these enemies, as you're seeing right now. And I see all those enemies, and I decide to go crazy with uh, my AoEs. Which is kind of what you need to do. Because if you just ignore the fact that those are there, um, they can overwhelm you pretty handily. Because they do hurt if they stack up pretty hard. Like you can see our health pulls dropping pretty fast, and our cleric kind of struggling to keep us up. Um, during the beginning there, but once once we get a few of them down, uh, it's all fine. But so we'll be encountering a few death shards uh, through the course of this run, um, and you need three to complete the quest. And after that, uh, get, you're you're good, and you don't need to grab any more. I think there's only three anyway, so it's uh it's a lot more clear and trash. You can see up on the mini map it marks for you where to expect expect those death shards to be at. Um, we encountered the first one and we're coming around the bend to get to the second. Doing a lot of trash clearing, you start to encounter the uh, Shadow Kalari that you may be familiar with already, um, as they come out of a lot of the death rifts in uh, Free March. Uh, so you start fighting a lot of them. Um, instead of just the normal undead as you start to delve deeper into this uh, this uh, area and I was just kind of looking around for artifacts because <laughs> artifacts are freaking everywhere in this zone I don't think I completed all my collections actually on my run through th um, ugh, on my run through free March when I uh, completely did it but all these trash packs are fairly simple uh, keeping an eye on my HP and uh, what everything's doing um, everything kind of goes pretty smoothly. Um, given I switched my spec around a little bit, I switched from being a Justicar off spec to being a Warden, and that's proved very handy for me. Um, while we're moving through these trash packs, I'm just going to talk about that and let you guys watch. Um, so my cleric that I'm using for this instance is Shaman Primary. Secondary, I like to call Druid, because... I'm actually putting points in the druid tree. I'm not just using it for my fairy pet. Uh, and then for my third spec, usually I think the way I understand it is your third spec is a skill that you want your tree to have that you lack. And what I got for my third spec is Warden, which is a healing spec. But it gives you access to a instant cast ranged attack and an instant cast um, hot, which are both extremely useful for a DPS class that can't heal itself otherwise. Um, other than the proc. Um, but shamans are, they have a lot of proc based abilities. Like you can see popping up above my uh, pet bar, I've got sort of like um, the WoW equivalent of, of uh, or well, in WoW it would be like overpower, I guess. Um, and then I've got another ability that, uh, I use after I crit, and another ability that is a heal that I use after something crits me. And I've got all of those, and those are all the black things that you see above my hotbar right there. But uh, we're taking out another one of these things. Um, you just need these for quests, like I said. And uh, if you're a shaman, you can kind of get a lot of mana regen off of these if you went ahead and put a point into your um, crit for mana talent. So it helps your AoE out. Um, because you're pretty much guaranteed a crit about on every other strike. 
I've got a habit of clicking people <laughs> when I'm doing DPS and I accidentally pull up a menu or something. If that tooltip keeps flaring up, that's why, because I'm click targeting, because I'm I'm just kind of not used to being in the group of running instances. It's been a while since I've had to tab target a lot. Um, and that's the good thing about Rift, that it shares a lot of controls with WoW, so I've been able to kind of jump into it and haven't had to feel too um, alien to the whole practice. So... We're going to keep rolling through here, and uh, we have one more boss fight, and the last boss is pretty impressive. I'm, I liked how it looked, and I liked uh, the mechanics of it. It wasn't too hard, wasn't too simple for um, an early level group. Um, they really, I think, this dungeon, um, as, a, as a whole, if I did rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 for the zone, and for the general just what it does um, and what it's supposed to be exposing you to I'd have to give it a, at least I want to say maybe an 8 out of 10 because it's a really cool dungeon I mean it's a little boring sometimes with the trash packs but um oh I forgot about this room yep you see the inquisitor there for a second she pops over that platform and she's starting to res something um, she's channeling a little spell on it, and we're all like, oh, okay, so we should probably move. And then you get to this room. This is the gauntlet of this instance, which um, I wasn't really expecting something like this. Uh, one of our group members, luckily, has been in here before and um, educated us on how to do this a little bit late. Um, because you see us whacking on this little beastie here, but there we go. She says, get on the orbs, does 600 damage a second, and that's what we do. And immediately these things start going down a lot faster. And I actually try to check and see what the dot's doing to them. But it's doing something to them, and that's obviously good. But I get a little crazy, and <laughs> yeah. Um, a little bit of AoE when the tank doesn't have it all picked up very bad in this place. You do not want to die in this gauntlet because if you die in this gauntlet people can't res you because you've got to be constantly moving through this area. Um, so you'll see that like three, yeah, you see that all three of our party members died and uh, now they're trying to struggle through and get through this gauntlet really fast. But here's the difference between Rift and WoW as far as instancy goes. Like, if we were playing WoW, we would have had to suck it up, release, and run back. Because they can't ra they can't res us in this place. Like, it's impossible. You can't res someone in here because you're always in combat. So, they would have had to completely reset the, the instance and they wouldn't be able to handle it. Well, in Rift, you have this thing called Soul Walk. And... You can see, kind of, if you're watching this on high quality in chat, um, uh, they're about to ask me if it's up. And what Soul Walk is, is a Soul Stone that is mobile, where you can click it, like I'm about to show you. Um, and I'm sorry for this part, I couldn't get any. <laughs> I was dead, and I was in a corner, and uh, the other two had their Soul Walks up, so it took a second for me to catch up to them. But um, the Soul Walk is amazing for instances like this because when I Soul Stone, you see all these mobs around me, and you're like, "Well, if you Soul Stone, you're going to immediately die." Well, no, because I can do this. When you Soul Stone in this game, you can run a little bit, and I can run just far enough to catch up to my group, and we're back in the game. In WoW, that would have been 20 minutes of running back and dealing with it and getting buffs back out and getting rolling again but in rift we're back in the game immediately and it's like no big deal we died we feel like idiots because we bar barked that up so badly like i pulled aggro off the tank in that part i think and i don't think the healer could have done much about that because <laughs> you saw how fast i died i mean I, I i'm a pretty good healer myself and i'm i don't think i would have been able to catch that so that's just a mistake but the way soul walk works if if you hit a part like that where you can't res your party members you're not completely s 
dead. <laughs> Almost said another word. Um, you're not completely dead. And uh, you can kind of recover from it because of the way the mechanic works. Every class has a soul stone in this game. And uh, it's extremely handy for situations like that. Um, you'd think that would be overpowered in PvP, but honestly, I don't think it is. It, it really isn't. It's In PvP, it'd kind of be the same as just respawning and running back to your corpse. Because you can corpse run in this game as well. But, I don't know. You'll see here, uh, we turn that one quest in, and uh, I see a staff that has better... <laughs> DPS stats than my uh, hammer I'm using, and I'm like, eh, I guess I'll just suck it up and use this a little bit. Um, it's like a mage staff. I don't know if I'm a noob for using that or not. Uh, but this big guy over here, yeah. This boss is pretty awesome looking. Um, I don't think he was that much of a challenge for us because it was a very competent group. Like I'm, like I said, I praise this group a lot because they really had their stuff rolling. And now that I'm looking at it, I think there's another melee DPS cleric in here as well as me. And then, but yeah. So what this boss does is you just saw the mechanic basically. Um, every so often, a little guy will spawn and he'll say, "Hey guys, he's about to do something really bad and mean. You need to come over here and stand in the light so you don't get s dead." <laughs> so you don't get dead and so you run over and you stand in the light and then you don't get dead and then you beat the boss achieve and he drops up loots so that's pretty much that and then you pick up your nice shiny uh, hammer I'm pretty sure there's a weapon for every class out of here so this instance is definitely w worth doing um, if you're going through re free march um, you get a nice uh, level 20 weapon to start you off in the next zone and that's always good so that's pretty much the end of Iron Tomb it was uh, it was a fun run I praise my party for being really competent and really together um, and with that done I guess I'll just see you guys later until next time